Welcome to Real Church TV. Once again, I'm your host, Abby. Um, our topic for discussion today, we're actually looking at child abuse and discipline. We're looking at the line between child abuse and discipline. Um, coming from the Afro-Caribbean background, there are ways that parents have adopted over the years to keep their children in check. You know, various forms of behavior management uh, procedures that parents have adopted. But back here in the UK, um, can we import the same uh, behavior measures? Is it going to work? Um, those from the religious background, from the Christian background, say that the Bible says that train up a child the way he should go and he will not depart from it. And the Bible also says that spare the rod and spoil the child. So we have someone who is knowledgeable in this particular area that we're going to look at. He's our resident resource person and he's a senior social worker as well. So um, I think he's the best person to talk to when it comes to what constitutes child abuse and um, what constitutes discipline when we're looking from the Afro-Caribbean background. So without much ado, join me. Let's welcome our one and only <laughs> Mr. Michael Asari, a.k.a. Opening Asari. Thank you, uh, Abi. Um, again, we are here today and um, another topic to enrich our audience and support the community and the society to make informed decisions on whatever they do. So, I'm privileged. Thank you for joining us. Thank you once again. Um, we're just going to go straight to the point. When we say child abuse, what exactly is child abuse? I know we have different types of abuses. What are they? All right. Um, now, I think the, 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 the topic was looking at abuse and discipline. Yeah, we're it? looking at, we're going to look at the line between child abuse and discipline. Right. Where the line, okay. where we draw the line. We'll but, draw the line. Yeah, but child abuse on a whole, universal perception of child abuse, what exactly is it, the definition? Right. So if, if we, I don't want to be very academic in, in this, mm -hmm. I just want to keep it real. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this is real child. Exactly. So, <laughs> so not specifically quoting and um, from anywhere. I just want to um, simplify that. Talking about child abuse would be anything that is done to a child in a way of uh, affecting that child's developmental or welfare, their growth and developmental needs, and their welfare in general. So jeopardizing their future, cutting their life short, cutting their life short in the, in the sense that whatever is good for that child is being denied, the child is being denied of their right to live, their right to life, their right to, to be who they are, that is in, in short abusing that child. Are there different types? Okay. So, then you have, like, neglect. Okay. So, a child is being neglected of not being fed. Okay. A child is being neglected not being paid attention to. Okay. A child is being neglected living in, in a neglectful environment. Okay. A child is being neglected where there is lack of supervision, so the child ends up into a situation where they cause harm to themselves okay. or another person cause harm to okay. them. Okay. A child is being neglected where they are, their health needs are not being met. So a child, the child is ill, you don't take them to the hospital mm. or education, you, you don't take, allow them to be educated. That is neglecting the child. The child. The yes, child. So neglecting a child is actually child abuse. That becomes an abuse. Yes. So you are abusing the child. Mm. So the environment, they are sleeping on, on a, a very dirty bed, their, 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 their beds are not being cleaned, mm -hmm. you know. The environment in which they live mm -hmm. is not conducive. Okay. So there is that as element of neglect okay. and that becomes child abuse okay. in a sense. So that's one aspect. We have what we call emotional abuse, abusing the child emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it comes to, again, where the child is not being seen to, the child doesn't feel loved, you don't, um, um, parents or family or the adults 
uh, even peer peer groups. groups, you know, elements of bullying contributes to emotional abuse. Where a parent or the adult, the caregiver, is not emotionally available for that child, then they are being neglected or they are being abused emotionally. Okay. Yeah, you, you, are, you are affected. You call them names. You tell them they are useless. They they don't wealth living. You know they. People are bad. You compare them to others, oh. so they feel emotionally mm -hmm. abused. You are not there for them. No. You, you 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 don't give them the the love oh. that they need. They can you, We call it. I don't want to talk about attachment, but it's a broad subject. So we're talking about bonding oh. with a child. So if I don't want to use the word attachment oh. because that is a big. Mm -hmm. Big, 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 big in itself. Mm -hmm. It goes very wide, but I would prefer to say bonding. You okay. know, so you are not bonding with that child. Mm -hmm. That child cannot come to you, so that becomes an emotionally abusive mm -hmm. to that child. The third form of abuse is physical. Mm -hmm. So physically chastising a child, hitting them um, with implements um, like a cane. Or, or a wood belt. booten, kicking belt, wooden you know, spoon, wooden spoon <laughs> um, 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 and, and, and anything, anything that could cause physical harm. Okay. You know, you can somebody will push their child, from, throw them over over the bed, or throw them through a window, or kick them, slapping them. That is physically abusing the child. Oh. The next point, part of abuse is sexual abuse. Okay. And today we have what we call child sex exploitation. How come the sexual abuse includes physically penetrating mm -hmm. a child mm -hmm. or physically touching a child inappropriately? Mm -hmm. um, um, whether you touch any part of the child sexually in a sexual way that will be sexually abusing the child. Exposing the child to to explicit materials. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even when you adult, two adults are in an intimate relationship mm -hmm. or having sex and a child is next to you and they are witnessing that, that becomes sexually, sexually abusing that child because they are not entitled to that. And that can also cause emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and asking children to perform oral sex. sex sexual activities on you or between two children mm, or be, you know engaging a child in prostitution, all this constitutes sexual abuse of a child. The, the list goes go on and on and on and on. Um, telling children, you know about you know explicitly sexual passing sexual messages, grooming them, mm. you know, grooming them, trying to make them feel wanting to engage mm. in sex, preparing them into wanting to be sexually active becomes sexually abusive. So these are the four main areas of uh, abuse that mm. clearly mm. exist. Uh, today we have abuse which has been going on on the internet mm. and th th that's why I talk about child sex exploitation. Mm. Children have been exploited mm. into um, wanting to be sexually abused by all sort of bad elements within society. So that, that is the definition of what constitutes or what's the makeup of child, of child abuse. abuse. Yeah. Okay. And, so it, and it's actually a crime. Of course, it is. It is. It is a criminal offense. Okay. It is. It is a. It is a criminal offense. We are being guided by, by legislation. You know, there are various acts, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so we can talk about. In the in the UK, we have the Children's Act, um, 1980, mm -hmm. um, reviewed. We have act which is being reviewed mm -hmm. and reviewed and reviewed. We have Act, two thousand nine, two thousand and sixteen, um, which all get towards keeping children safe. safe. We have the United Nations Convention right mm -hmm. of the child. Again, they all look into the welfare and protection of children.
Okay. So I'm more particular because we're looking at it in the context of the Afro-Caribbean home. Okay. And um, as, as we know that culture and religion is embedded, is, is an integral part of most homes from Afro-Caribbean background. Mm -hmm. So we looking, the topic today is actually looking at the line between discipline mm -hmm. and child abuse. Mm -hmm. So where parents, back home from where we come from, I mean, different parents depend on the context, have ways of disciplining their children or bringing up their children. So as I said earlier, those from the Christian background, as the Bible says that, spare the rod and spoil the child. So from their religion stand, from what I understand from that uh, statement, means it's, it's okay in their religion, or their religion permit them to use, I don't know, spare the rod, so whatever, whip or cane or whatever, on the child. So, um, of course, I mean, the university, the university declaration uh, stands, it overrules, does it overrule individual religions or cultures? No, not a slurry. Mm. Of course, certain discipline may end up to yes, become abuse. Okay. okay? okay. Mm. So, in that sense, we need to look at the mode of discipline. Okay. Now, you mentioned about spare the road and spoil the child. Mm. What does that mean? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Anything that causes harm, mm. either physical or emotional harm, mm. and I'm talking about harm, mm. damage. Mm to a child becomes an abuse. Okay. So the kind of discipline that you are you are um, exerting, exerting yeah. you need to look at it as to what are you looking to achieve. Okay. Discipline is to correct, is yeah. to bring about change. Yeah. Now, if your mode of discipline is not bringing about effective change, learning is bringing about permanent change. So if it's not bringing about that change, then what is it? If that discipline is going to uh, to cause harm, mm. it's going to cause damage, mm. then it is not it is not it's inappropriate. That's okay. the, that's what we we will say. It's not it's not appropriate to exercise that kind of discipline. discipline. Okay. Okay. So within the laws, mm. parents can discipline their children. I call it boundaries, okay. setting up boundaries, okay. yeah? And in a way that managed to um, put a child back on track yeah. or in, ch in check. Yeah. Discipline is about trying to correct, yeah. telling the child well, what you did is wrong, so do this. Mm. So what do you do in that sense? Mm. If you can a child, mm. what are you looking to achieve? Does that is that going to bring that correction mm. that you are looking for? Mm. To what level do you can that child? Exactly. Is yeah. there any other way you could have done to achieve yeah. what you're looking to achieve? Yeah. Could you use discussion? Could you take things away from the child and say, well, you know what? Because you did not do A, B, C, D. Mm. Now you're not going to play on your PlayStation, mm. or you're not going to go on to you know we are going out today. You're not going to go swimming. Okay. You take activities or you take privileges mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. than doing the physical chastisement. But wouldn't that also constitute to, as you defined earlier, uh, um, the definition you gave earlier, if I'm right, with emotional abuse? Because if you're withdrawing certain benefit or privileges from the child mm -hmm. and it causes the child to be emotionally drained. I mean the child is crying and feels down or whatever. Is that also not emotional abuse? Well it's, a, it's to a degree. That's why I said the, the level of harm mm. should be measured. You need to measure that harm mm. and see to what degree is it affecting that child and it's go, is it going to damage that child in a longer in a longer in a longer term, so taking taking um, a child's toy mm. or or they are something that they are particularly interested in mm. within a period, mm. and that needs to be measured. So let's say a child's phone, mm. okay, or you tell them to face um, to um, sit on the naughty chair mm. for 
five minutes, mm -hmm. depending on their age, ten minutes, or they should. Um, this they are not going out mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Will probably be adequate or, or, or acceptable, but for a week, okay. for a month, okay. for a year, mm -hmm. who have taken your phone away from from you for a month, mm -hmm. or you're not going to go onto the internet for. Three days. Mm. Come on. You need to think about it. So it's the measure. You need to be able to measure its quantity and quality. What that learning comes about. And what do you do after? So engaging the, ch the child in that conversation. Mm. You know, disengage them. Mm. Or set their minds free. That Listen, the reason I took, away the, I took this away from you mm. was not because I hate you. Mm was because of what happened. Let's have a chat. Mm. So you engage the child in the learning process so that whatever they did to, for you to discipline them in that way, do not happen again. But it's not about um, taking it away from them mm. and then they are crying. Mm -hmm. They are crying for, for a period of time and you are sitting there and just looking at them. No, you engage them. So you, you, you help to address that distress. Uh, Which a is child going crying on. and throwing tantrums. How do you engage that child? Because, it's, as you're saying, this it has to be. We are talking about the impact it's yeah, having on the child. That's right. And um, you also said, as you're saying, taking their phone or whatever for one year or one month or is too extreme. Yeah. So, but we, every child is different. Everybody's different. What mm. someone can handle within ten minutes, somebody can can't handle within one hour. So, yeah. how do you measure the impact? Uh, it is true. I mean, a child throwing a, a children will throw tantrums mm. for for various reasons, mm. and at, as parents, there is no one way or a, a template mm. of good parenting. Mm. But there is a good enough parenting. So you know, you need to know your child. Okay. Okay. You need to understand your child. You need to understand the cause of mm. their why they are throwing the tantrum mm. and try to disengage them from one thing to another mm -hmm. so you need to try other things um, it's not about um, it's not about persuading them exactly. it's not about buying their love exactly. it's not trying to um, bribe them mm -hmm. their way their way but it's I, I say it's about engaging them in conversation engaging them in activity so okay um, why are you crying? You are crying because I took the two hours from. Mm. Well, in five minutes time, you get it. Mm. Okay, can we go and do something else? So, you divert the child's attention mm. from one area mm. to another to calm them down. It is not, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's straightforward. Mm. I'm not saying it's simple. Mm. Okay, and this is why, as parents, we need to have that patience to be able to do that. Because okay. the, 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 our frustration, you know, when we, we extend our frustration mm. to the child, that adds on to the tantrum. Mm. Children throw tantrums for, for various mm. reasons, yeah. but you need to understand yeah. situations to address them from okay. that person's perspective. Okay. If you were that child, how would you like to be treated? What would you like to hear? How do, would you like to be responded to? Yeah. And you, ask, you can ask the child. Yeah, irrespective, it's interesting that you hear... Does it depend again, on the age? Again, that's what I was going to drive, drive up. Um, they'll say, oh, a baby is one year old, they don't know anything. It's a six-month year baby, they don't know anything. Are you sure? They know a lot. They have understanding, they, they look at the environment, and they interact with the environment. So, various research have proven where well, mother is gone out, and then coming in the baby becomes alert. Mm. What does that mean? They, they communicate. Mm. So you communicate with, with them. So the year is important. You have to know how to communicate with a child who is six months or one year old, baby born today, and who is, who is one year old, two year old, three year old, six year old, up to adolescence. Mm. Because they all have their way mm. of listening and their way of understanding. So yes, age matters. The age matter in the sense that that your engagement with mm. them would de de okay. determine how what kind of again discipline mm. that you you put or boundaries that you put in place. True. 
Um, there have been discussions in the media, I mean, about parental right, mm. right that have been taken from parents to discipline their children, mm. the way they feel that it's, it's workable, mm. the way they feel that it will achieve results. Yeah. And, uh, and when most children, we are talking about youth from the Afro-Caribbean background, when they engage in antisocial behaviors, you know, gang crimes, knife, just this year alone, I mean, there were a lot of stabbing. Mm. Just about two, three weeks ago, there was a stabbing at North London. You know, so when these children, when children engage in antisocial behavior, the compass or the moral compass or the moral ramification automatically, not automatically, but mostly goes to the parents, goes to the home that mm -hmm. the child is coming from. It's usually said that, oh, this child is not from a good home or the parents, they don't bring them up properly. You know, meanwhile, there is parents are also, are also um, saying that because you can't, basically you can't do anything to your child. You can't scream on your child. You can't hit your child. You can't do nothing to your child and some of the behavior the like taking their toys or the boundaries and stuff are not working. So there were some parents actually think probably the way they were brought up, the same thing, or you going by the Bible or going by their culture, they think they should give them some sort of control. Yeah, the, the, the the law has not taken away parental rights of mm. of discipline or guiding their children. Mm. Uh, that is that is that's not that is not true. Mm. The law set out mm. like a guide. Mm. For example, you see, I've mentioned about neglect. I've talked about emotional, mm. about uh, physical uh, chastisement, mm. physical rules, and I've talked about sexual abuse. Okay, anything we would do to abuse a child mm. is not going to be accepted. Mm. I think the problem we have is that I think we we don't want to find other means of doing things. Okay, sure. if you. Let me set a scenario here. Mm. If I bring in a, a painter mm. into this room to paint this ceiling, mm. they can take a brush and paint this ceiling mm. without a paint dropping. Mm. And of course, some paint will drop. Mm. So what they'll do is they'll put some covering on the floor yeah. so that if it drops, it falls on it, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I don't have this knowledge, I don't have this idea, so when I come, I pick a painter and paint it, it will be dropping everywhere. That's true. The skill, the knowledge, mm. the learning that mm. as parents we need in this 21st century particularly is huge. It's true. Our, the way we were parented years ago mm. is not the same today. Information on the internet yeah. has social media around us mm. in books it, from peer groups. It's far way beyond. Mm. So if you are a parent and you want to live in the 16th century mm. way of parenting, you'll be lost exactly. because your children are going to be 25 million exactly. steps away More from advanced, you. Yeah. So what we are talking about here and causing all these problems, which is not really acceptable, mm. and parents take a chunk of it and they feel like they are being empowered, mm. it's understandable. Boundaries, setting of boundaries, mm. being able to tell your child and be fair and firm with them is crucial. Mm. Okay, so the fact that you cannot be cane your child mm. does not mean you, you, mean you cannot you cannot say, Okay, if you leave that door, mm. you're not going to go to the cinema tomorrow. Okay. okay? Or no, you don't. You are not leaving. The fact that you don't hit them, mm. you came in late, and you don't question the, mm. that child. The child is bringing home a new gadgets, and they don't work. And you are not saying anything, thinking, "Well, your your parental right has been taken away from you." That means there's no bond. Routine. You know what time do you go to bed? What exactly. time do you do your homework? Yeah. Do you check what they are studying when they are on the internet? Do you go to check what they are looking, what they are reading? Exactly. Yeah? yeah? Guidance, mm. direction, True. sitting down, having meal, talking together. True. This are this is what you look in forming a home or building a child. Now whilst we have disengaged mm. and leaving our children with the view that well, if I tell my child not to to do something, they are going to report me to the police. Of course, if you hit your child, they will report you to the, to the police. 
Of course, and I, 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 I support and agree to that because that is not the right way. There's no culture. That's which it is acceptable. We, it is become a norm that we look at it that, that that is what it is. No, we were brought up. I was brought up in an environment. I went to school where I was being caned and all that. It doesn't it didn't do anything to me. Exactly. Trust yeah. me. You get used to it. And I became mm -hmm. a teacher. Mm -hmm. If you ask children that I taught way back, mm -hmm. they will tell you. Among the teachers in my school, I've never I had no even problem by then. I don't care my children, mm -hmm. but my class was the most respectful and most engaging class. Why? Because I interact with them. Mm -hmm. I go around to find out about their problem. When I see them sleeping, I go to them and find out, why are you sleeping? Why did you, did you, couldn't you sleep? And I get to know Everyone what is them. happening with them and get to help address. Mm -hmm. So parents' rights have not been taken away from mm -hmm. them. And what we need to do as parents is begin to understand mm -hmm. What constitutes our role, and get back to be doing that, rather than thinking that the only way of wanting to deal with our children is physically beating them or screaming and shouting at them. If you scream, if you scream and shout at if you, me, if you scream and shout at me, I'm really not going to listen to you. And it's the same thing with our children, and that's what we think we have to. We need to find different ways of doing new ways or different ways of doing things uh, rather than the ones that we know and that i think is what to me is the issue that needs to be corrected oh. thank you sorry so um i'm more particular about the emotional I mean, because the physical abuse you can see and can measure, measure that's true sexual abuse if you're trained uh, as a teacher or uh, social workers, you can see. You know, you don't necessarily have to be trained to know sexual abuse. If you, if you, if you, uh, if you sleep with a, a, a an, an age or whether consent or no consent, it's yeah, abuse. Um, yeah, that's the physical yeah. side. I'm just talking about the exposure to, uh, let's say, a two-year-old or a three-year-old has been exposed to sexual images. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's it's not visible for a teacher or somebody else to know that this child has been exposed to sexual images unless probably the child starts exhibiting. Well, the child will say it. Children, children make disclosures. Mm. Their behavior and the things they say, mm. you know, their, their attitude towards other children. Will tell. Where did they learn it from? Okay. Yeah, and, and it's not necessarily from the home. It could be anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so exposure, that's yeah, what we talk about true. grooming. Mm. It could be from a family member, a friend, mm. what they see, the things they see on TV. Mm. They are all part of it. So that can be seen. So you don't necessarily need to be, of course, having the knowledge mm -hmm. and understand what that mean or could do to a child mm -hmm. is important. I think sometimes ignorance mm -hmm. plays a big role mm -hmm. in our society. We don't see them as anything. Mm -hmm. We think, well, the child sees that on TV, is well, sees it. They don't know anything. They know a lot. Yes. So ignorance is the key, not because they are not trained. Yes, sorry, carry on. Okay, and uh, also neglect. Yeah. We just take it and neglect. Um, what if, let's say, children are going on school trips? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of the school trips cost a lot of money. Yeah. Some actually go outside the country, you know, and let's say it costs a lot of money and the parent doesn't have it. The parent cannot afford to pay for the child to go on that trip. Mm -hmm. And the child becomes so affected. Let's say the whole class is just one child mm -hmm. who may not be able to go because the parents genuinely mm -hmm. are not in the financial position to afford the trip. And it causes this particular child a lot of emotional stress and abuse. And is that? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, schools, mm -hmm. schools uh, know uh, not being sorry, let's put it this way. Not being able, not being able to f to afford mm -hmm. because poverty rates mm -hmm. um, affects families, and mm -hmm. we know that the majority of of families mm -hmm. uh, today are not even able to afford mm -hmm. the, the, because afford the standard of the basic you know living mm -hmm. condition mm -hmm. because they don't have mm -hmm. the financial capacity capability. Not having that mm. or not being able to pay for your child to go to a trip mm. will not be will not constitute neglect in itself I and mean, of course the child will feel emotional distress mm. so i'm sure schools and services mm. have in place support packages okay. to help mm. families who 
are in that kind of situation. Okay. What will make constitute emotional abuse mm -hmm. will be when the parent can afford or there is a way to support mm -hmm. but they fail to do it. So then the child will see yeah, my mom and dad have <laughs> but they don't want me to go. Then emotionally you say, mm -hmm. well you are not going to that trip mm -hmm. because you don't deserve it. Because of what you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well what she did yesterday and the learning that going to gain from that trip exactly. is two different things. Exactly, yeah. Okay? Could you not have taken something else mm -hmm. than, than um, um, uh, not allowing them to go on that trip, which will bring them the learning? Mm -hmm. It will enhance their social, just social development, mm -hmm. it will uh, uh, enhance their uh, actual intellectual learning because they are going to gain no, new knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they are going to meet new friends, mm -hmm. people, and they are going to exposure. Mm -hmm. Do not think of all that. Mm -hmm. So, if you have the means mm -hmm. and you fail to, to support the child, mm -hmm. then, of course, that is going to be seen as emotionally neglecting that child. Mm -hmm. Stopping them from doing what is best because of what? Because it's you know, priorities. Don't you know, maybe the money is there, but it's a lot of priorities. No, it's it is not. Mm -hmm. So how do you set those priorities? The priority of you buying a new car mm -hmm. is is better than paying for your child to go to a trip. Okay. So this, that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So you need to set priorities right. In economics, you have a scale of preference. Mm -hmm. So what is what is on your scale of preference? Mm -hmm. What comes first, your children's education or your self gratification? Mm -hmm. Because I'm just, we are looking at the line between discipline and abuse. Yeah. And um, the parents also, it's not, yes, um, uh, this is about looking at children, the context here is on children, the focus is on children. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the parents also come in, in the sense that most children, some children have been taken to care, care mm -hmm. homes, and some parents think that they've not been dealt with fairly. Mm -hmm. Some parents think that it was just um, an maybe innocent uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe things went overboard, or th there, there's this clash. So um, we are using this the trip as a case study. A parent may think, based on their religious or cultural premonition or something that they've had, they said, mm -hmm. okay, because of A, B, and C, probably they didn't even have the money. But genuinely, I do not want my child to go on this trip because of A, B, and C, whatever reason or excuse they have. Children are taken into care. Uh, on, on matters that really concern or justify, mm. and, it, and it should justify, mm. of taking a child from one environment mm. and placing them in another environment, mm. okay? So, uh, it's not just a straightforward principle. Yeah. It's, you need to go through various procedure, mm. procedures or proceedings to be able to achieve that. You need to prove beyond doubt mm. that moving that child from that environment to that environment will keep them safe. There are certain situations where children are exposed to um, uh, exposed in an environment where you need to take that immediate action and okay. then plan later for the long term care okay. of that child. So we need to we are we're not gonna go into that details, point okay. there are those details yeah. as of now. Okay. But what we need to look at is that whatever we are doing to children mm. Or did we do to our children? Okay. Is it going to be in the breach of their right? Okay. To what degree? Okay. Is it going to affect them in the long term? How do we minimize that so that it's it makes an appropriate sense okay. in their life or in, in their welfare? Okay. Okay, that is what we need to basically look at. So say a child is you mentioned about going going to a trip and because of your religious belief and all that. Have you put in into context mm. as to what that trip means to the child? Mm. What is the benefit? Is it to the child's best interest okay. or is it to your exactly. religion exactly. or your needs? Okay. Whose needs are we serving here? Okay. Whose needs is that religion addressing? Okay. Okay, so it's quite interesting you're talking about religion because some religion, for the sake of some religion, some children have been, um, have experienced um, malnutrition 
in their in, yeah. their, in their food yeah. because of religion that kind of food is not being yeah. eaten or that kind of medication cannot be exactly. taken if it's, if it's hospital uh, blood exactly, transfusion exa exactly. Stuff, yeah. so it is it is important we begin to think mm. i'm not i'm not saying religion is not good mm. what i'm trying to say is that we need to look at a need okay and address that need okay. of that child okay. what benefit is it to the child okay. what impact is it on the child okay. if you're taking away something from it even even the mere discipline that we talk about right if it's going to have a significant mm. and we say significant i cannot measure quanti quantify what significant mm. will mean in this context. Mm. however we will be able to understand mm. that a long duration mm. of um of taking things away from a child mm. is going to affect them then you need to measure and put it within that range okay. which will be beneficial and supportive to that child okay. rather than harming them okay okay um our time is up thank you Ophelina Sari yeah. and is I know you our uh, um educated us a lot I have learned a lot and uh, I'm gonna use something like on parenting as well is your last word yeah. Anything well, you see, like I said, there's no template. Mm. But we need to sit down and ask ourselves mm. what we really want for the children mm. you know, we have today. They are going to be our future like this. Learning is not uh, quantified to just one person. Learning is not in one person's head. If you don't know something, you ask. Exactly. Today, there are children's centers, there are resources, I'm not trying to institutionalize parenting. Mm -hmm. You can go to people who have experience, who have parent children. You can go to, if you fall, it is your pastor. As long as they have the, the, the knowledge and they are not going to just focus on, uh, on just one set of principle which they know to advise you. So, so you have to do. You need to learn from different sources to enhance your, your learning about how you manage and keep children safe. Our children need to be protected. We need to understand the difference between discipline and what will constitute abuse. There's just a fine line. We can discipline our children. However, certain disciplines may, may result into them being abused. We need to avoid that and keep our children safe because they are our children and they are the future of our generation. Well, so full stop once again. That's the opinion, I'm sorry. Um, thank you, opinion, I'm sorry. There's nothing to add, because <laughs> he's a senior social worker, so that is his field. But as he said, I mean, obviously, as I said earlier, when I was having a discussion with a couple of youth from the Afro-Caribbean background, um, of course, we're not gonna just allow our children to do whatever they wanna do. But as Opinia Sari rightly said, whatever disciplinary measures you want to adopt with your children shouldn't cause them abuse or pain, shouldn't do more damage than okay. trying to yeah. correct them. Yeah, exactly. You know, so as Opinia Sari said, um, find what ways. I mean, we shouldn't just stick to what we know, as he said. I mean, we have to learn. You know, there are people that we can go and take uh, counseling from. Or yeah. There are so many knowledge is everywhere these days. So yeah. we shouldn't just stick to the usual or whatever it is that we've been practicing with our children all this well. So thank you, Penina Sari, for joining us. And this is Real Chat TV. And I've been your host, Abby. Until we meet next time, thank you. Bye.